If there's one thing that annoys me about Subarus and WRXs, it's that they can be quite loud. So I think it's time we did something about this car. So if I just rev it in neutral, you should hear it open. You can see here, the, see it's open now. And it closed again. It's closed now. So this is really cool. So as you're driving, you can set that to whatever you want. So I've had this car now for a couple of years and to be honest, I haven't really done anything to it apart from just, uh, you know, just standard servicing stuff. But one thing that's really stuck with me is, like a lot of Subarus, they can be a bit offensive, the noise. And, you know, I'm not 21, so driving a noisy car does not really appeal to me. But saying that, there's sometimes when you drive it, you think, I wouldn't mind, you know, hearing the exhaust. I don't mind the sound of Subarus. It's just some of them are just too loud. This car has a three-inch exhaust on it, like a lot of turbocharged cars do. So I thought I'd like to quieten it down so that, you know, if you're leaving your house early or coming home late at night, you don't want to annoy your neighbours and that sort of thing. So what options did you find were available for this particular car? Oh, there's plenty of options when it comes to changing your exhaust system on a Subaru. I mean, if there's one car that's been around a long time, there's a lot of aftermarket support for Subaru WRXs. I mean, they've been around for, what, over 20 years now. Um, I wanted something, though, that was quiet when I wanted it to be, but would still give you the performance and also when you would like to, you'd still like it noisy. Like if you want to take your car and do a track day or do a hill climb, some sort of event, take it for a mountain drive, you know, you don't mind the car being a little bit noisy. It's not offending people in that situation. But I want it to be, I want it to be quiet when I'm at the traffic lights, quiet when I'm at home, doing normal day-to-day -day activity. I don't need it loud. So X-Force's Varic system was appealing to me, especially the new smart box features. A lot of people don't haven't seen the capability of the system. Is this similar to what people would know as, uh, you hear it references like a bimodal on a modern car, an exhaust system? Yeah, yeah. You're effectively got a, some bimodal systems are vacuum operated. This one's electric, electronically operated, like a lot of other factory cars. But this one, you can set it basically whatever you like. It's not like just, I want it open and close. Like you might remember these old, um, just get them out. You might remember these old key rings. Just open and close. Just... That's that. That was the original Varic system. Yeah, yeah, and they, yeah, they were good. They were good. But like they've stepped it up. It's it's great. Props to the X Force for stepping up the technology. Now they make some really nice high quality exhaust systems. So they suggested we go and see the guys at Performance Exhaust in Knoxfield. I'm David Robinson from Performance Exhaust. I've owned the place since about 2003. We have been an exhaust shop for a lot longer than that. We custom fabricate, modify, build anything on any car. We sell online. We're a big seller on eBay. We have our own web shop. We specialize in spare parts. We sell to the trade, retail, online, all around Australia. So if you want it, you can give us a call, browse our website, and we'll ship it out direct to you. So everything is on hand, so you could build and come here on a Friday and go home on the weekend and make everything you need. So you sell flanges and all that sort yep, of stuff? Yep, flanges, cat converters, donuts. You can have 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees. These are all our mandrel bed pipes that we get made in state so we can jig up our systems. So we make patrol systems, oh, yeah. Falcon systems. And so these are the corresponding jigs. So you make a lot of this stuff. Yeah. 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 So a lot of our online stuff is pre-made in-house. So we design them on the cards, we get them right, and then we make them ourselves. We get custom heavy duty mufflers for four drives. So they have a really good note that they keep the drone down to a nice level. So we uh, keep a large range of the X-Force brand. We find it fits well. It's a good looking system, it sounds good. They specialize in European, Japanese cars. They're very good at the Commodore range, Falcon range. So it's one of the top brands and we well recommend it all the time. Hey guys, um, so these are our Annie's apps. Um, we put them on every single car. They're an anti-surge. Uh, basically when we weld on the car, um, you can send electrical currents through the car and it can ultimately fry your ECU. So on every car, we make sure we put them on and that way, you know, safety first. Sweet. So it's as simple as putting it on like um, when you jump start a car and make sure the green light's on and you're good to go. So you fit quite a, you fit quite a few X-Force exhausts, David? Yeah, all the time as we're a national dealer. So we recommend the exhaust systems. They're quite good, look good, do the job got really well. Three-inch mild steel exhaust. So you can see where it's all rusted away. So it's fairly old. Needs a bit of renewing. 
it, the muffler's starting to empty out a little bit and get a bit old. Yeah. All right, so we've got Luke's car here today and we found a few issues with his front dump pipe. We look up on the steering right up here and we found that the dump pipe is really fouling on the steering knuckle. And what that causes is, as you go hard into a corner under acceleration and you try and turn the steering wheel, the dump pipe catches on the steering knuckle and locks your steering. Super dangerous. There was a change in about 2003 on WRXs with different dump pipes. This is obviously the wrong dump pipe for this car. So we'll have to stop fitting the exhaust now. We're gonna do a cap back and we'll get a dump pipe in and we'll put the correct dump pipe on to rectify this problem. This was the exhaust that was on the car. As you can see, it's a combination of bolt-on stainless dump pipe meets a uh, fabricated mild steel. Here's the rear muffler. The packing on it is starting to go, so probably not in too long. It would have needed replacing anyway. This catalytic converter is actually fairly recent. We had this fitted after we took the car to a test and tune because the car felt quite flat. And it was found that the cat converter was uh, partially blocked, so this went on. The car has driven better since this has been replaced. So you can see where the steering joint has been rubbing on the dump pipe. So hopefully by installing the new one, we'll uh, stop that from happening. And it's pretty bad, isn't it? Yeah, so it, it happens. It just depends on the brands, but yeah. we, don't, we don't find that it ever happens with X-Force, so. Here we have the old exhaust versus the X-Force New exhaust, the full stainless system. So here it's got a cast downpipe or dump pipe, whatever you want to call it. And we have the new flexible joint. So you can see with line up the flange plates, where that mark is, where it's been rubbing, there's actually quite a yeah, it tapers in a bit, doesn't curve. it? Yeah. So that'll probably prevent the steering column from hitting the dump pipe, which you were saying you kind of noticed. A bit. It makes sense now. Sometimes when I turn left, yeah, it would lock up. Well, I thought it hit the gutter or something. run around after everything's bolted up hard. Um, I'll even show you, we've used some gasket goo as well just to make sure that it doesn't leak. Um, main points are just where the turbo meets the dump pipe. That's a big one. Um, and just all the others. And even the uh, flex joint, which you can have a look. Sometimes, not X-Force usually, but you do find that flex joints do leak a little bit. So um, yeah, we're just gonna run around, have a little listen, um, tricks of the trade. Bit of mum's old garden hose yeah. does the trick so yeah basically you just have a feel um, if you hear any sort of standout noises then you sort of have a closer look but um, if you're looking listening for like a, a chuff noise or like a, a farting noise um, it's sort of the standout farting like a Volkswagen Golf yeah a little bit so what are you doing here Tim um, so we've got to take the inner trim of the rear off all the way down the passenger side um, That way we can get the wiring in um, Hidden away so when you open the boot, it's just a normal boot, but you've still got the Virex all hooked up So it's a little bit of a process, but just take it gentle and, and you know don't force things and you won't snap anything There are other actuated exhaust systems where you can open and close the valve. This one here, this is your standard settings. Look, you've got 25, 50, 75 and open. But the thing that sets apart the X-Force, the Varix, the smart box system, this matrix mode, for example, because this connects to the OBD port, you need an OBD port to run the smart box system, which most cars after about 1996 do have. So, I mean, it's... It's a very common, it, it, yeah. yeah, unless you've got yeah, an older unless, car. Unless you should... you've got an older car. Um, most cars, it's, it's just a simple bolt, bolt-in, you know, solution. Whereas at the moment, if you can see there, so basically, 
look, the valve inside the band. So you, you've got this band snap here, and you've got the valve outside the band. So at the moment, if it's under 2,000 RPM, which it is at the moment, and it's under 30% throttle, you've got three different at 55, 55 kilometers an hour. So at the moment, it's closed. And I've said outside the valve band, outside of these ranges to, to open to 75. So if I just rev it in neutral, you should hear it open. You can see here, the, see it's open now. And it closed again. It's closed now. So this is really cool. So as you're driving, you can set that to whatever you want. I mean, you might just say I want it at 50%. Realistically though, like if, especially if you've got a turbocharged engine, you're going to get a lot of back pressure. So you can't be driving it around everywhere with the exhaust closed. You have to be a bit smart about it. But the thing I want about it is when I'm doing light throttle, low RPM, i.e. in traffic, I don't want the thing obnoxiously loud. Yeah, there's no reason for it to be noisy at all. No, no. I so, mean, this thing really sounds like a Like you said before, I, turn, standard I turned up here before and you didn't even hear me turn up to your house, whereas in the past you'd know I'm, I've arrived. <laughs> It's pretty common when you've got a, a louder car with a, a, a big exhaust on it. So you've got four at the yeah you've got four different settings. You know how, depending on how you're driving, like if you were doing a if you're doing a track day and you thought a I'd track just, day yeah, you, you wanted a, you want the you, valve open obviously a lot. Yeah, you could set all that, and then you can and you can you might have your street setting. At the moment, I've got the street setting set like that. So you've got and this saves it. This saves it obviously. So every time you come in here, it's it's you don't have to redo this or anything. It's all saved. So when you drive it, you're good to go. The number one thing that attracts, I guess, the wrong attention to your car, the first thing is noise. If you've, you know, if you've got a really loud car, you see people, they turn around as you walk past, they're looking at the traffic lights. So at the moment, it's, it's closed. It's actually not that loud at all. Like, we'll open it fully, like you might, as you might run it at a track day. It's a fair difference. Open it all the way. And it's really just more bassy. When it's, it's more really the bass. It's, it's not so much the volume of the exhaust. It's the bass that makes it loud because that's what shakes your windows. But so when you're at the lights, it's in the past you'd have your, your three-inch exhaust or whatever, and you, it, it's like this all the time. You can't get away from it. Now you can have it closed. You know you can have it idling here for an hour. No one's going to come over and annoy you. You can actually see the exhaust valve opening here. See the screen come around. And it'll come back down. Do that again. At 60 k's an hour, the valve's closed. You and you're even near the car. It's you're like, on light throttle. It's, yeah, it's like driving a standard car. Yeah, I mean, look how quiet this is on idle. There was really no louder cruising at 60. With the, the those parameters, we had it set, I think, closed up until 2400 RPM. So you'll hear, it, you'll hear it open as I drive, and you'll hear it probably open and close. Yeah, I'll just get out of the traffic. But you hear it open in a second here. Yeah. Right then. It's currently set to open to 75. And I put it in, it's in fourth. If I put it in fifth, the valve will probably close. That's, I've, got, I've got it set to basically anything more than 25% throttle to open. You're climbing a hill now. So you're climbing a hill, so you don't want too much back pressure on the turbo, obviously. But when you're just on a flat piece of road, like doing 60, you know, in a residential area, the things I've got it set to pretty much close. You can't hardly hear the car, it's pretty good. Close now. See, I'm get, not giving the car much throttle at the moment at all, so it's basically closed. We're not doing much RPM, 2400 RPM. If I put a drop it back a gear, it'll open. But you can. The, the great thing is, you can keep you can keep fine tuning these settings as long as you want, where you work out what the you know what the engine does and doesn't like. The, the valve will close now. Basically, see, there it goes, it's closed. Gearbox, gearbox is making yeah. more noise than the engine. It is, yeah. 
yeah, the, the gearbox. You know, the funny thing is, since I put this, I've only had the system on a few weeks, been driving it around a bit. Um, you start to hear a few more rattles and creaks that you didn't really know were there. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll get onto them. We're going to be doing a bit more maintenance on this car, a bit more tuning. So you'll probably see a few more videos of this Subaru in the next few months. But yeah, if you're looking for something like this, X Force catered to quite a few models now. Pretty much all the popular models. You see a lot of these systems on Golf, Golfs, GDIs, Golf Rs, that sort of thing. As you can see, even on an older car like this, this car is nearly 20 years old. The technology still works fantastic. 